Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Monty Tisland. I have recently rejoined Photo Bears. I see a name or two in here that I have dealt with before. Uh, good to see you all. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about RDDs. We're going to start talking about RDDs here. So what are we here to discuss? We're going to talk about report styles, a duplicated report style, so that you can modify the RDD, which is the report data definition. The report data definition we're going to do is how to properly add a table and a relationship to it so that your information will show up again. And lastly, we're going to talk about the SSRS. We're going to modify the associated canned report so that we can display this field from the new table. <clears throat> I apologize. I've got the cold. It's not the coronavirus. I already had that. So, so anyway, let's get on to the demonstration here. find the right icon here there we go all right this is done in 10 to 600 because they wanted me to i've been in 10 to 400 for a while so please forgive me if i'm a little slow at this so so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the report style maintenance and that's going to be under system management reporting and we're going to go to the report style all right <clears throat> Now, there's a reason why I do this, just so that it's easier to find the information, plus you have to do this anyway. So I'm going to pick on the order acknowledgement. Okay, let's get the list here. Come on, show the styles. All right. So now we have just a standard out-of-the-box report style. So what we want to do here is we're going to go up here. We're going to go up to Actions, Copy, Report. What it's going to do is it's going to copy the standard out of the box one. It's going to put it in the Custom Reports folder under the Sales Order Acknowledgement. Here, while I've got this going here, let's do this. Let me get the SSRS portal up here. So that we can show you where it's at. All right. This is our internal SSRS portal for 10.2 training, 10.2600 training. So I'm going to go to custom reports. And we can see there's a sales order pick list and this other potential one here. So let's get this out of the way. I'm going to tell it to copy. Looks like something's going on. Come on. There we go. All right. So you can tell the difference easily because style number is pretty low. All the ones when they add styles, the style is going to be greater than a thousand. So we're going to give this a different one so it's easier to find. I'm just going to call this, if I can type, Monty Order Act. Now, things that are important are the report style, has to be SQL Server reporting. This is the one we're gonna change here in a minute. And the report location you can see has suddenly been moved to this. If we pull up this now and I refresh it, we should see three. And here's the sales order acknowledgement. Now we have those, it automatically copied them over. Copied them over. One thing to note, be careful copying them over because it may overwrite what's currently in here. If you already have one, I would suggest you do it manually. All right, so anyway, so we've got this in here. We've given it the new name. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the order act. And I'm just going to right click from here, just as easier, go to the report data definition. Give it a second to pull itself up here. All right, there we go. As you can see, there's a few tables in here. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go to the list first. And I'm going to do this. Let's go to the resources lists. There's a sequence number here. I tried to put any of the additional tables that I put at the end. Uh, this 901 
you don't necessarily need to go that high. You typically try to get above 100. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the part table. All right, so let's do this. Ah, first, figure it out. The problem is I have to duplicate it first. See how that goes? Order Act. I'm going to call this Order Act 2. Ta-da! Look at that. Hey, look, now we can add tables. All right. Now, logic says you should be able to type directly into here. I haven't had very good luck with that, so I always go with the schema table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the part table in here. I'm going to grab the part. Like I said, there was one that was at 100, so I'm going to go up here. Okay, now this is in the table. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this. Okay, now by default, this is going to include everything, which is something you don't want because it slows down the whole process. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna touch off it and touch back to the part one, and I am going to exclude all columns. Save it and then refresh. Because <laughs> we don't need them all, we only need a few. So now they've all been excluded. And hang on a second, looks like I got a question. Uh, what is the new certificate field used for? To be honest, I don't know. I'm new to 10-2-600 myself, but I'd be happy to find that out for you. So we will get back to you. Thank you for your question. All right, so now we have everything in here. In order to create the relationships as well, we need to make sure that the relationships, that every field for the relationship is included too. So in this case, in this case, if I can speak right here, well, I should quit drinking in the morning. Okay, so we got the company and I'm going to grab the part number. Okay, there's the part number. And just for the fun of it, this is all I'm gonna put in here, even though there's probably no data in here, I'm gonna actually put the part height in here. Just say this is the one, this is the one field that I gotta have. This is, it's not on there, so I'm gonna, Put this on here, or we can say here, let's do it. We can also put the part description on there, which might actually different than what's currently on the order. So now what I'm going to do there, so I'm going to save this. So now we have the part added, the part table added to it. In order for the information to display in a proper format, we need to add the relationship. So here's the relationship table. I'm going to add a new relationship. So if you follow the same pattern that they have, the parent table is always on the left. So we're gonna put order, we're gonna put this as order detail. And I'm just, I always use a two, not to spell out the two, but T-O, but to do that. And we're gonna put part. I noticed that some of them in Epicor have that too, but just my way of doing it. And I'm gonna call this order or detail. To part, come on, fingers tight. And then we have to tell it's the order detail, skip the key, we're gonna call part. The relationship type is, is kind of critical here. Definition only is an inner join. Output is an outer join. So I always use output just so it's that way, so that you're safe, just so in case you don't lose anything you want. Then we have to add the fields, how we wanna to tie to it. Here's the company. And the company, you can push this to add another one, or from right here, if you hit tab, it will automatically add another line too. Oops, missed it, part num. And then we go to part num. So then we save it. This is order act two now. So now we've done everything we've needed to do to these. RDD in order for it to be functional for it. But now what I need to do is I need to tie this to, I need to tie the report style, the new report style to this. So we're gonna exit out of this. 
and depending on sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Looks like in this case it does. So we have to select the new order act two. While we're on the right one, we're on the one that I created. This specifies it's gonna use this data definition in order to generate its data. So now I can hit save. Now at this point in time, normally what I'd tell you to do is I would tell you that now the easiest way to do this is to go to the order entry form and then generate a report that you want to, or generate a the report that I put in here and you actually tell it so that you can save the display the data, you just go grab the report uh, good in order to do this. However, this being a uh, this being a temp database or the training database, there's a CRM module that, that is we have the license for, but it's not turned on, so I can't show you that. So anyway, so what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to, we're done with that. I'll just leave that sitting here. I'm gonna pull my report builder up. And I am going to go, hang on a second, let me come over here. Let me get this so you can see it. Come on. Hey, look, there you can see it now. So now we're gonna open and we're going to go to the report server. We're going to go to reports. We have to find that custom reports. And then we go to the sales order acknowledgement. And in this case, the SO form is the main one. So we're gonna go with that one. So now, if you do happen to have a table good, you can actually view these straight from here, but you need a valid table good in order to display that. So not gonna do that if you want to. The best way you can do it is just go in here, do table good, default values, specify the values, add it, paste it in here, and, and then you just, then you can run it at will back and forth, back and forth, making sure you get it the way you want it. Just remember to remove it when you're done, otherwise it will cause issues. All right, so I always verify that we have just a single, a single data set that we're going to do. And in this case, it's the order head one, which you can see there's quite a few fields in here. Let's move this over a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to hit data set properties. Now you can't see anything here, however, but if we hit the function key here, we can actually see what is going to display in here. Now this is where it gets into really SQL heavy. All right, so now we need to join, in order for this to display the information that we want, we need to, dis we need to actually join it. So we need to find the order detail. So we can see here, here's the order head. We go to the one, here's the order detail. Okay, so here's the one we want. It's actually number two. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab that one, it comes around to right there. So we got that, I'm just gonna grab that. I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna follow along here. So there's a T3, we have a T4. I'm gonna go to the very end here and I'm gonna add it to the back. And so then we need to put our table name in here. And we need to be careful that we leave the underscore because this is where the that table guild sits. And since this was four, we need to name this to five. And everything after this needs to have a five in it. And in this case, we need to change how it's linked because in this case, it is tied together via the part number. Clear as mud, are we doing good? Okay, so now we have added the left join because I set it up that way. It was a left outer join for the part table, we call it T15 or T5, excuse me. 
get rid of that space, it bothers me. T1 company, we don't want it tied to T1. See, there's the thing right there. That T1 is the order head. We want it to order detail. So we have to set U to two. And we go T5 to company, then we go T2, part num, T5 part num. Okay, now we have the join done. Now what we need to do is we need to add the field. And what I call that, what was that part height? I'm gonna go T5, T5 dot part height. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna T5 dot part description. Okay, so now I'm just gonna review. We have the two new fields in here. We have the outer join to join the tables together. So I think we have everything done this so far. So I'm gonna hit okay. Step one is complete. There's a second step to this. Now we have to go to the fields. So now it's actually in the query, but it's still not displayed in a field that's gonna show up on this list over here on the left. So we add a query field. And you can call exactly what was in there, part height, part height. The one on the right is what's coming from the data set that I just modified. If you wanna call this something else, like in some cases you're gonna get, you can get a supplier part number or a supplier number from a couple of different tables. You can call it, in this case, we can call this part, part, part height or part height, part or whatever. The one on the left, you can name whatever you want. So we're gonna add both of them. Part description, part description. All right, so now I'm just doing a quick look just to see if we do have a part description in here already. Part num. Yeah, see here's a part num part description. So there's one in there already, but it's named differently, so we're okay. So once we have those done, all we have now everything is done. So when I hit okay, you should notice the this bar on the left moved just a little bit. So this should be at the very bottom. Your new part height, new part description. One thing before you go too far now is try to preview it. If it has an issue, it, it'll tell you right now before you even do it. So look at that. So now we have something. So now we have this field and we can put it on the field, we can put it wherever we want. I'm just randomly throwing this in there, by the way. So, so that's basically what we have to do in order for this to work. Does anybody have any questions that you have? Uh, like I said, I'd love to show it to you, but unfortunately, didn't have time to get that done. I don't know if I can try and open 10 to 400 and do the same thing, but I'd have to do the same thing over there. So clear as mud, simple, simple. This is, again, being recorded. If you have any other, if you have any questions, can I make you the presenter? Uh, what do you need to be the presenter for? All right, well, thank you for your time. If you don't have any questions, I appreciate it. How about adding data to the, how about adding data that is not related to the table? Well, it needs to be related somewhere, so. Is there a cheat sheet on the steps of what you what needs to be done? Uh, nope, just gotta follow along and write it down. <laughs> Again, thank you very much for your time and everybody have a good day. This will be uh, posted up on the Coda Bears YouTube website as quickly as possible so you guys can review this at your will. So thank you very much and have a good day.